spite of all our communication technology, no invention is as effective as the sound of the human voice. When we hear the human voice, we instinctively want to listen in the hopes of understanding it, even when the speaker is searching for the right words to say. That's because the human voice resonates differently from everything else in the world. Unmistakable Creative Podcast. Listen in on candid conversations with creative entrepreneurs and insanely interesting people. All right, everybody. Uh, this is your host, Srini. Welcome to our inaugural backstage episode of the Unmistakable Creative. Uh, I am here with my co-host, Greg Hartle, and what we want to obviously talk about today is the uh, significant volume of changes that we've made for our long-term listeners. Uh, if you are new listeners, you probably may have figured out by now. Uh, until Monday of this last week, we were formerly known as Blogcast FM. Uh, so really excited to kick off the year with a new brand uh, and some really killer new interviews with Danielle Laporte and Amber Ray. Greg, how's it going? Uh, it's going. It's going. We've got a lot to uh, talk about and a lot changed in the recent weeks. Yeah, I mean, I guess really the the point of, of today's uh, backstage uh, episode really is to talk about uh, a, a bit about the process, uh, a, a bit about the motivation behind uh, renaming the show and, and rebranding it, um, and, and really everything that's gone into it. And of course, there's a, a lot of listener questions that we'll answer as well. But why don't we start with the motivation? I mean, you know, you came into to this whole process about six months ago. And one of the first things you said to me, I think probably about two to three weeks after we started working together, maybe even sooner, is I want you to start thinking about changing the name of the show, uh, start thinking about rebranding it. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was time. I mean, we've outgrown Blogcast FM, but I'm curious. I mean, you saw that right when you came in. Yeah, I don't really recall exactly what I was thinking back then, but I do know that I, it, to me, branding is about a feeling and it's about uh, how I want to feel or how I want others to feel when they interact with us. Mm -hmm. And the name alone, just Blogcast FM, the word blog in it has a lot of connotation and a lot of um, specifics around it. And I felt that when I was listening to the interviews, I didn't feel in that title that it really represented who we were or who we wanted to be or where we were headed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that alone was enough was enough to make a change. And then on, on top of that, I felt that, uh, you know, we had, we had reached a point where the, you, you have to determine what circles you're going to play in or, or where your, uh, brand is going to fit into the world. You know, I, I was talking to you about the idea that in everyone's mind is a parking lot and in that parking lot are a bunch of parking spaces and we all have parking spaces for everything you know what's our favorite restaurant what's our favorite color what's what's our favorite type of drink what's uh, any sort of brand fits into each of those parking spots and and for us you know it was determining what was the parking spot we were going to hold in people's minds and uh, what did that mean and what did that represent and how did that feel and to me it was time for a change yeah, I mean, I think that uh, even if you look at sort of our guest selection, it's funny because, you know, one of the funniest iTunes review I think we've seen that came in just this morning, uh, right when I woke up, it said, thank God they changed the name of the show because now I can go tell all my non-blogger friends about this. I've been wanting to tell them forever. Uh, and that's that's really kind of indicative of, of just the evolution. I mean, I think that, you know, somebody had asked, did you, did you always start out with the intention of not interviewing bloggers? But after a certain point, there was... One, there were so many other interesting people doing cool things and, and remarkable things and unmistakable things that we could learn from. You know, when we've had, when we look at our guests, we realize we kind of had transcended blogging once we started getting people like Eric Wall, who's a graffiti artist, people like Sean Acor, who's a happiness researcher, um, people like Noah Kageyama, who was a peak performance psychologist. And, and the, the funny thing is, all of these people had really p powerful things to teach us. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's it's okay that, that the brand went through an evolution. I think, you know, it's a scary process. The idea that you're going to change everything is, <laughs> is somewhat of a scary process, but it's also one in which you have to constantly ask yourself, you know, how have we evolved or should we evolve? And, um, you know, when you, when you listen to the, to the story of how you first started this, 
in comparison to here, you know, 400 interviews later, four and a half years or whatever it is, it's you're in a different place. The world's in a different place. What people are looking for is different. Who we want to be is different. Who we want to communicate with is different. And uh, and so it had to take that sort of evolutionary process, um, and and it was time to make those changes. And and what was nice was is that you know you don't know what's going to happen when you make those changes, but it was it was somewhat obvious. You know, if you go back and you connect the dots, it was somewhat obvious that a change was almost necessary yeah. in many ways. And. And that's when you know it's time to change is, is when it is obvious. And you'll notice that with other brands and other even personal brands when people make that switch. It's a very uncomfortable switch, but if it's the right time, it usually reveals itself and it's pretty clear. And for us, it was for sure. Yeah, no, I, I don't think, you know, that, that, that's, the, that's one of the questions people have been asking me is, is was it hard? And I said, you know, I, I'd love to tell you that it was, you know, agonizing in terms of, hey, we got to ditch, you know, something that I've... Somebody asked me, Am I, was I attached to, to Blogcast FM? And I said, you know, no, not really. It was really strange. I didn't feel that, you know, I felt that, hey, it was, it was time to let go. Uh, I could see it. You know, I felt that we were very limited by, by being misbranded. And, and you know, we, we talked about this previously. Our listeners were, were ahead of where we were at, and it was the funniest thing. I mean, we were both at a party last night, and uh, we met somebody who listens to the show, and she said, yeah, she was like, I was thinking, you guys have the wrong name. Yeah. Yeah, and she's a fairly new listener. She wouldn't have thought that had she been around from the very beginning. It would have made clear sense to her why the name was the name. But if you've listened in the last eight months or so, yeah, it doesn't make sense. And one of the things I was talking to you about was is that you know people have their immediate impressions. And if, if your immediate impressions don't reflect the feelings that you want to convey or want that person to feel, then they're gone. Mm -hmm. And for us, that matters on many fronts because, you know, first and foremost, we have our listeners. So it's the immediate impression that any new listener would experience and new listener, meaning they haven't listened yet. Mm -hmm. So if they just search in iTunes or they arrive at the website or whatever it might be, will they even attempt to listen is a really important question for us to answer. And then on top of that, we have our guests. You yeah. know, how many guests would go to the website and go, why would I do an interview here? Why would I do an interview uh, for bloggers when I'm not a blogger? Why would I do, you know, so we had to, to deal with it not only on the listener side, but also the guest side. And then uh, uh, third, the sponsorship side. Mm -hmm. You know, it also has to match with the sponsorship. So when we're having conversations with sponsors, or we're saying, hey, you should sponsor this show, they have to have that same feeling too. They have to arrive and say, yeah, of course we would sponsor that. That makes a lot of sense for us. And, and I think we had somewhat of an uphill battle on all three of those fronts where we had to explain ourselves too much. Mm -hmm. We had to convince, no, 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 this isn't just a show for bloggers. No, 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 this isn't just about online entrepreneurs. No, this isn't just about marketing or business. And when you have to explain yourself you're misbranded. Yeah. Period. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, that, that, that's a, that's a good way of putting it. And speaking of sponsors, you know, we, we forgot to do our shout out for sales right when we started this. But uh, I mean, even you know, I got an email, a uh, Facebook message from Melissa, our community manager over at Sells, saying, "Hey," she said, uh, "Love the new branding." She says, "We already have new customers coming to us because of, of you know hearing about you guys on our, our site." But yeah, I mean, I think that. Uh, there's no question. I mean, when you know, and, and for those of you guys who haven't checked out Cells, it's a cool product uh, that makes it super easy to to sell anything from your website with like no programming at all. I mean, it's one of the easiest things I've ever seen to use and really clean interface. Um, so definitely check them out. But yeah, I mean, it was it was like it it was amazing how different that conversation was with her. It was kind of like we're no longer trying to convince you that this is a good place to advertise. It makes sense. Like we're 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 actually a, a, a proper marriage, you know. Yeah, and, uh, and then it becomes a lot easier. It becomes a lot easier to uh, convey the message we want to convey to new listeners. It becomes a lot easier to find the sponsorships we want. It becomes a lot is easier to uh, book guests that we otherwise might not be able to get. So yeah. I think in many respects we freed ourselves up to, to grow the way we want to grow and to do the things we want to do. And, of course, the only reason why any of this matters to the listener is so that they can consider that same thing with their work. Mm -hmm. You know, they can... They, they can take this message and this idea and this concept and ask themselves, um, you know, the questions that lead to, am I branded correctly? It, it, am, if I have a parking space, if everybody has a parking lot in their head and a parking space, am I in the right parking spot? 
uh, in people's heads and uh, is that is that where I want to occupy their space and and does it make sense and is an alignment with where I started sometimes we just keep doing things because that's the way we've always done them of course that becomes the innovators dilemma Mm -hmm. um, and and that's how people find themselves out of business whether you're Blockbuster or uh, Kodak or whoever else you might be that's how you find yourself out of business because you haven't innovated. You haven't disrupted yourself first. And uh, we were a little bit behind, but I think we caught up fast. Yeah, not only that. I mean, I, you know, like we were saying, uh, we were talking the other night. You are saying this is just the beginning. I mean, chances are we're going to disrupt ourselves again. Of course. You know, of course. And that's the only way to keep doing things. Um, so speaking of which, let, let's talk briefly about kind of the process. Uh, and then we'll work in some listener questions to that discussion. But, uh, you know, I, I think that it, it was it was really interesting, you know, to, for you to come to me and say, okay, you know what, let's change everything after four years. And I'm thinking, okay, that sounds good. I'm terrified of things breaking and how do we do this in a way that everything goes smoothly. And uh, it, it really, in, in, for the most part, I mean, for such a complicated rebrand of, of you know, 400 plus interviews, a show that's been in, in the iTunes store for four years, we, we definitely pulled this off really smoothly. I mean, uh, you know, you, we have to give credit to, to people like Brad Gauthier, who did just an amazing job architecting this thing right from the get-go. Um, and, and really, I mean, he's, he's really the mastermind behind what you guys see on the new website. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's kind of a, a unique situation in and of itself because, you know, the company that built the brand and the website, <laughs> I own, so with Brad. So, you know, I was playing both sides of the coin here where I was having conversations with Brad about what we're doing as far as uh, sitebuilder.io, our business that built this site and this brand and everything else. And then I was having conversations with you about what to do on this side of things. So that's a very uh, weird and awkward place to be. But, um, yeah, I mean, Brad did a fabulous job, uh, you know, on the programming and uh, many things, of course, that the listener won't even see on the back end of stuff. But, uh, and then on the front end, and then we had the right, you know, we, you had the right relationships from times past to bring in and really bring the artistry to it uh, and, and make it distinctive. I mean, when you just wrote the book, The Unmistake, you know, The Art of Being Unmistakable, you know, it was really, and, and that's in our title, it was really critical that we bring something unmistakable to the table. And the reality is, is that you look at the site, you look at the brand, you look at what we've created. You just simply won't find that anywhere else. Yeah. And that's what we had to create. And and frankly, in my opinion, that's what every entrepreneur or creative has to create right now in today's world because it's so noisy and it's so crowded that if you aren't doing something that stands out as unmistakable immediately, uh, it's going to be a tough road. Well, you know, I think that, you know, it goes back to what Brian Holiday said uh, when we had him here. He said, how are you going to make a large, unignorable statement? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that you, if you guys have not visited the site, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, the, the just overwhelming response when we've met people in person, when they've sent us emails has been, oh, my God. This is really cool. And, you know, you're right. I mean, we were very fortunate to have, you know, we've we got to give credit to our team here um, because they, they really, I mean, they came through in, in, in just fine fashion. I mean, we really pushed them to their limits and they, they worked fast and they produced really high quality work and they never compromised. Nobody on the team compromised. Yeah, I mean, we had great artwork by Sarah Steenland. We had great artwork by Mars Dorian. We had great, you know, web development by Brad and the other members of the team at Site Builder. Uh, and, and that's actually one thing that I think is really important. You know, I've talked to you a lot about um, solopreneurship and the real stats behind solopreneurship and the idea that you it is almost impossible to build anything of significance on your own. And uh, the idea that you need a team, you need a team of people, and you need to be good at managing that team Mm -hmm. uh, effectively, bringing in the right people, choosing the right people, but also managing them well through that process. I think that's highly underrated. You know, it's um, I've you know, as I traveled around the country doing my ten dollars in a laptop project, I met countless people that wanted to start things on their own. And I I am not a fan of that. I, I don't see a lot of value in doing something on your own. I'm not saying that you have to have 10 people on your team from day one, nor can you likely afford them, but you have to get people involved from the beginning. You mm-hmm. have to get other, whether whether it's just advisors or, or other people that you're hanging out with all day long that are guiding you or advising you or helping you, whether it's, you know, vendors like we used um, to come in and do specific tasks at, at specific times or whether you have business partners or whatever it might be. 
Uh, this is a team game. You cannot win this game on an island by yourself. And I see countless, countless, countless people trying. I mean, there's 22 million solopreneurs in America, and less than 7% of that 22 million make over $100,000 a year. Less than 7%. Make over and, and the average wage of a solopreneur is about $45,000, which is ironically the average wage of an employee in America as well. So you have these people that branch off on their own to do their own thing because they want to be their own boss and do their own thing. They make the same amount of money but work 10 times as hard as an employee at a job. They don't have uh, the support, and they're running themselves into the ground. And I think it was really important for us to get the right team members on the team and put them to work and let them let them do what they're talented and gifted at doing. So I don't know about you, but vacuuming is not one of those things that I ever look forward to doing. But as you know, your environment has a huge impact on your creativity. So I still like it to be clean wherever I'm living and working. But now it doesn't have to be something that you deal with. If you're like me and you grew up in the 80s, you probably fantasized about the day when cleaning your house would be like it was for the Jetsons, meaning you don't have to lift a finger. Well, the good news is that we're already kind of living in that future. And the easiest way to make sure your floors are clean every day is with the iRobot Roomba Robot vacuum. It cleans up after itself. The clean base automatic dirt disposal takes convenience to a new level, automatically empties its own bin into an allergen lock bag that holds 60 days of debris and traps 99% of pollen, mold, and dust mites so you can forget about vacuuming for months at a time. Let the Roomba clean for you instead. It learns your home, finds dirt, and empties itself on its own. It's got powerful cleaning performance made effortless. Remember, if it's not from iRobot, it's not a Roomba. To learn more, go to iRobot.com slash unmistakable. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there, there's no question. I mean, I think that, that if there's anything I learned from this entire process, uh, it was that it was it, like how critical other people were. Uh, you know, I mean, it was... I was like, you know, I mean, I, I honestly didn't do anything. I built the foundation, but this team is what made this all possible. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. And, and you know, every team needs needs the person that's kind of guiding and, and inspiring and keeping people focused and, and all that. And that was, you know, that was your job. And, that, and that's what you brought to the table. I mean, you know, you were able to look at things and say, hey, this isn't, you know, we, we need to uh, bring more art to this we need mm -hmm. to make it look better um, you know so you, you brought the right attention to detail that was necessary you created the standard of excellence and brought the right attention to detail and then the team delivered yeah yeah totally I mean it was, it was that, that was really kind of one of the funnest parts is to look at it and say okay how do we make this you know how do we how do we make it unmistakable you know I remember when you know we called Brad two weeks ago like listen this is what we need we need people to show up here and say holy crap this is unreal like just be wowed and dazzled and I realized that's a tall order and a vague one, but I mean, everybody, everybody kind of knew that that was it. We're like, the standard is this, you know, we set the standard, we all commit to it and ev nobody compromised. Everybody wanted to be part of it. Um, so let's do this. Let, let's actually talk a, a little bit about some, some of the listener questions around this whole branding process. Um, Shannon Drake actually asked, how do you define a creative and what inspired you to make creativity your new mantra? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give my thoughts on this. I mean, I, I think, I define a creative as somebody who makes something worth talking about. Uh, and that's that's a big part of why, you know, what drove my mindset, what really convinced me that rebranding was necessary because I wanted to talk to people from different art forms. I wanted to talk to, you know, I wanted to talk to filmmakers. I wanted to talk to people who've done, you know, one of the, the examples that keeps coming up, there's a, a park and I can't for the life of me figure out what it's called the Skyline or the Highline in New York. It's like a 10 year public works project that became a park that got saved. And I think interviewing the guy who did that would be an amazing chat. I mean, to, to talk about stuff like that. Uh, so in, it, for, my, for me, that's really how I define a creative, somebody who, who makes something, you know, that's worth talking about. Yeah, and I, I would say much the same. You know, I, I look uh, for creatives to be people that have distinctive viewpoints or distinctive work, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what stands out, what, what makes them different or unique or their work different or unique. And I think that's the world that we live in today. I think that the people who are succeeding are those who are distinctive in, in some respects, whether that's in their writing or whether that's in their drawing or whether that's in their, you know, small business in some way. You know, I, we've talked a lot about people that we've had as guests on this show, uh, obviously just in, in the recent last six months or so, 
who are very distinctive in their work. It's it's very obvious um, that it's them. It's it, they create that unmistakable art, and to me, that's that's what a creative does. Mm-hmm. So uh, Angela England asked, "This has been brewing for a while. Was there something specific that made you decide that now was the time?" Uh, yeah, I mean, I think coincidentally, you came in six months ago, and we knew it was going to be. Uh, we knew that you know you said this is probably a six month process. Um, you know, it's not. I mean, part of it is it's a new year. Uh, I think that that's one of the things that worked out well um, in terms of timing. But I mean, I think that it was just it was. That's that's. I don't know that there's like a a, a dead on answer that I have for why now was the time. Yeah. yeah, well, now was the time because we were way behind the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, now as in, you know, January 6th, well, there was no specific time. Uh, you know, the, January 6th became the date just because we got the work done by then and we had our first interview of the new year to release by then. That was no mm-hmm. magic formula. It just happened to play out that way. But as far as now being the time, I mean, when I first got involved, you, you know, it's it's – I, I do things in a big way. I mean, you know, I look at things and I see potential, and that's why I get involved. I, you know, my whole goal is to take things that already exist and make them better, and um, that's just how my mind works. And so when I came in, I agreed to come in because I saw something that was good, and I thought I could make it better. Mm-hmm. And uh, a big part of making it better was immediately changing the brand, and I think it will be better. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Ralph Quintero has, has a good question. This is a fun one. What's the most difficult decision you had to make with the rebrand, and how did you handle it? My personal opinion on that, I, I don't know what yours is, was the naming process. Um, the naming process was difficult. I don't know if it was the most difficult decision. Um, I don't know. We didn't have too many difficult decisions, ironically. I mean, it wasn't – we knew what we wanted, and yeah, I think that's, that that's, that's the important part was – it, it's we didn't sit around looking at 900 different things and go which one of these should we choose yeah we knew what we wanted from moment one we knew what made us distinct we knew what what made us unmistakable so we already knew what we wanted I mean we went through a you know a few iterations on the logo design and went back and forth on it but the the beauty of of knowing who you are you know at the core and this is something that you know will be talked about at the instigator experience um, uh, by by a few people probably by Erica Learmark who does an outstanding job of it and and by Justine Musk is when you know who you are when you strip it all down and you really know who you are it decisions are not agonizing decisions are really easy when yeah. you, when you know who you are and you know what your standard of excellence is decisions are really simple to mm-hmm. make and they're not agonizing oh my god which direction should i go the answer has already been made for you and that's what i think most small businesses uh, fail out fail at often in fact you know as an advisor to several businesses i was just having this conversation on monday with a company, the two owners of the company who were making agoni- – every decision was an agonizing decision. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, the reason that every single decision that you're making is agonizing is because you haven't determined the essence of who your what your brand is. Right. When you have the essence of your brand, decisions are easy. When you're Apple, decisions are easy. It either meets Apple standards or it doesn't. Yeah, there's no in between, and that's how it was for us. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think you know the the perfect example of that was when we saw the first version of the icons. I said, you know what? I looked at it and I said, I know the problem right away. I said, we can't use custom, you know, we can't use stock photography. I'm like, I know the issue. Let's have Mars design the icons. And I said, what do you think? You said yes. And the next day, Mars was, we, you know, he had a check and he was to work. I yeah, mean, it was that fast. We didn't wait. That was the thing. A lot of the things you guys saw. I mean, when we say some of the people who some of the artwork was fast. I mean, Sarah turned things around in 24 hours in many cases. Uh, we said, hey, this is what we want to do. Can you do it? And the next day we would see the first version of it. Uh, and that's I think that's largely because we knew exactly what we wanted. And you're right. I think that's what trips people up. That's why you have, you know, 100, 100 different conversations with your designer about a logo because you don't know what exactly you want. Right. And 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 I would say that, one, you have to get clear about what you want, because if you're working with any sort of other person who is has an expert skill at something, it's very difficult and very frustrating to them to read your mind Mm -hmm. they you know they can't read your mind and then the second thing is is you do have to once you do know what you want though you have to empower those individuals or or turn it over to them 
uh, not really empower them, but just turn it over to them and let their talent shine. And, yeah. and thankfully, that's what we got. Yeah. Um, so another question. This is an interesting one. I'm going to turn this one to you because I'm not even quite sure how to answer it. This comes from our friend Rachel Resnick. Uh, how deep does brand go? <laughs> I don't even know what it means. I'm not even sure I know what it means either, but I love Rachel. So uh, I appreciate anything that she says and, and when she chimes in. Um, I mean, you know, to me, brand is about essence, you know, back to what I was saying earlier, it's, it's at the core of everything, everything that you do, every decision that you make, it's the essence of who you are. And that's hard to verbalize properly. And you just know it when you know it, when you know it. And, and you know it when it's not it is, is just as important. You know, it, when we were, when we're doing the instigator experience and we went around and we were looking at venues, Within two seconds, we knew if it was it or not it, you know, and, and when we looked at logo within two seconds, we knew if it was it or not it. If you're on the fence about things, if you read copy that you have on your website and you're on the fence about it, if you see nine logos and you're on the fence about all nine, if you, if you, uh, you know, put something out into the world and you're on the fence about it, then you haven't determined what your essence is. Yeah. And, you know... I don't know what the magic formula is there. I just know it when I know it when I know it, and I know it when it's not it, and and so it becomes really easy. I wish there was a magic formula. I wish I had a magic formula. I don't, um, but I see that other people do. I mean, I see people like Justine Musk, for instance, who has a process to get to that soul print, as mm-hmm. she calls it. And to me, it's about peeling the layers of the onion. I mean, brand goes as far as, and as deep as you can peel the layers of the un- onion to get to the essence. Well, you know, I think that, you know, the, the fact that you just know it, you mentioned the venue. I mean, how many texts did you send me with ideas and I, or for, for names? And I, every time I replied, I'm like, no, I hate it. Yeah. I, did, I didn't even wait two seconds. I didn't deliberate on it. And then when you sent the name Unmistakable Creative, I immediately said, that's it. Let's move. Yeah. And, and you know it when you know it. You know, it's, it's, there's no magic formula. And here's the thing is most of us are so caught up in, in the business of doing business that we lose sight of essence. So, you know, we read the book, we listen to the podcast, we, we read the blogs. We're always trying to find some edge that exists outside of us when all edges exist inside of us. Our uniqueness, our soul print, our, our essence, that all matters far more than anything we're going to read from someone else that's going to tell us what brand is supposed to be. And I think that we've done a good job peeling back the layers through questions. You know, it's just a constant game of asking questions. You know, I'm always asking you questions, Serena. I'm, I'm asking you, you know, just the other day I asked you, who, who are the uh, most downloaded interviews and what do they have in common? And through that process, we determined who they were and what they have in common and the direction to shift the interview of the show because of it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we just know, and where we get trapped is we start looking to other people and other ideas, other people's ideas for what our brand should be. And you can't get to the bottom of your own brand looking for other ideas for what brand should be. If you read a book on branding, you're screwed. That's my opinion. I mean, I, I think you're, you're screwed at that point. And I think you're better off just peeling the layers of your own onion to getting to the core essence of who you are and what you stand for. You know, put a stake in the ground and say, this is what I stand for. This is what I believe. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at a company like 37 Signals, they do that really well. You know, they, they put a stake in the ground and they say, this is what I believe. Are you with us or against us? And most people are unwilling to make that claim. They're unwilling to get to the core of it. They're unwilling to put the stake in the ground. Um, and, and in my opinion, that's what branding is all about. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, I'll take two more questions. These are, these are similar. I mean, they're from Liv Campbell and uh, Liz Brazier. Uh, why creative? Are you talking to more artists now and, uh, you know, new target market or evolving target market? I mean, I think those are both kind of a similar question. Uh, reality is, yeah, I mean, our, it's not a, it's not one, we've always been targeting creatives. Uh, we just haven't been as clear about it. I mean, there's plenty of creatives in our community. That's why people like Sarah Steenland listen to us. Um, that's why people like Kathleen Jasper, who's a high school principal listens to us. I mean, we have artists, I mean, we have doctors, I mean, the, the sheer diversity of our community made it very necessary. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's a new target market. I think it's an evolving tar- target market. I mean, it's, it's pretty clear when, you know, like we said at the beginning of the show, when one of the iTunes reviews says, hey, I'm so glad this rebrand makes all the sense in the world. I have a list of friends a mile long that I've been wanting to tell about you guys, but it didn't make sense. 
Yeah, and and I would say though is we have stayed in a bubble. Um, you know, yeah. we've branched out of that bubble on occasion, but we we we've popped the bubble. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're outside of the bubble now, and I think that's going to be uh, very important for our evolution. Um, the reality is is that you started this project as a project and you started in a bubble. You started interviewing the same groups of people um, that did the same type of work and you asked them the same questions about that work because you were trying to figure something out as part of a project. And and it, it's evolved greatly beyond that at this point. And yet, for to a large degree, we were still in that bubble. Mm-hmm. And so to me, part of the rebranding was not in external, you know, I mean, sure the logo changed and the name changed and all that, but it was internal. It was time to say, let's get out of the bubble. It was time to say, let's not interview the same people that everyone else interviews for their podcast. It was time to say, let's not ask the same questions that everyone else asks. And it was time to, to develop, uh, uncover our own essence and, and develop, uh, something that was distinct and unique and unmistakable and uh, so we're, I mean, and it's a process. I mean, we're not going to get it right from moment one because we, we have four years of conditioning mm-hmm. that, that we have to, to peel away and move, move more toward the direction that we want to go. And we were making those moves in small steps. Now we've taken a giant leap. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, let's give um, some quick shout outs to our listeners. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple, uh, Ricardo Jimenez, uh, is my go-to place, uh, Gina Egan, she wrote this just beautiful review. It's so long. It, it'll take too long to read, but, uh, thank you so much for that. It's an awe-inspiring, uh, Kurt Buma is the guy who we've been, ke- we kept referring to. He said the rebrand is incredible. And this is it right here. I was subconsciously afraid to rec- recommend the show to old friends just because of the name. Now I have a list of mile long of people. I will tell about it. So Kurt, please go go do that. Uh, we we really would appreciate it. Um, you know these reviews make a big difference. Uh, you know not only in our ability to to grow the show and get sponsors, but also uh, in in bringing you guys interesting guests. You know the the more that there are reviews there, the more we can find sort of these these people that you don't get to hear on other shows and you only get to hear on ours because they look at it and say, okay, this is worth doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's exciting times, and thank you guys for all the the shout outs and the feedback and. Um, you know, your true thoughts around it, because the show is built around you, obviously. Um, You know, the the listeners are most important and first and foremost. So, you know, the whole idea here is we we didn't just say, what do we want to do? You know, the questions that we asked are what what do we think our listeners want to hear? And where do we think the world is headed? And where do we think we can add significant value? And uh, so, you know, hopefully we're accomplishing that. And it sounds like from the reviews we're getting on iTunes, uh, we are, which yeah. is great. Yeah, no doubt. Well, let's uh, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Cells. Uh, you know, great company with a, a really cool product. If you're looking to sell anything online, they make it super simple just to upload your uh, product and have it up and up for sale within minutes with no programming or anything required, no templates, none of that nonsense. Uh, and if you have not been to the new website, a uh, lot of cool artwork that Sarah Steenlin did. Uh, you know, just just it, it, overall, you should visit the site because it'll give you a sense for how to push the envelope and being unmistakable. I think you know, I mean, we've done something that Greg and I are both really proud of, and uh, you know, like we said, you know, it was it was thanks to an amazing team. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys all very much. And uh, I think we'll wrap the show with that, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening in on another candid conversation at The Unmistakable Creative. Embrace your inner misfit, express your creative voice, and remember, the goal isn't to live forever, but to create something that will.